one standard set of theories about aging are basically noise-based theories that that just over time, something, it might be the genome, it might be something else over time, something accumulates errors, and that it's basically the uh, it, it's an external source of aging, if you will. It's, it's, you know, it happens because there's damage that accumulates over time. Um, we, we've, we've been driven by some, some wild results in, in modeling of, uh, goal directed morphogenetic systems. We've been driven to a different ideas. I'll, I'll bounce this off of you and see, see what you think of this, 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 um, this idea that what, what we see in our, in our computational model is that when you have a system where, uh, a bunch of competent subunits cells are bound towards uh, uh, implementing a particular goal. So there are uh, error, you know, st stress-based mechanisms that keep them towards a particular goal. W once they've accomplished that goal, which is to build the correct morphogenesis of the body, then then they sort of hang around for a while and everything is fine. But but then eventually it 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 starts to it starts to degrade and it starts to degrade for no external reason there is no damage we've not introduced any you know progressive decay of uh, you know thermodynamic uh, whatever there, there isn't any of that it it starts to decay for what looks to me and this is early days i don't know but but what looks to me like a very psychological reason it's a it's a goal directed system that has reached its goal and now doesn't know what to do anymore and it starts to dissociate there is no new goal it, it's already done the thing it was supposed to do and it's and it's very weird that in a system like that it doesn't just stabilize it it sits there for a little bit but then eventually it just starts to degrade and so to to me that that i mean i i like dissolving all kinds of distinctions for sure but but to me it seems it's it it's it's critical to um how we think about interventions this idea that you know is aging because external errors in the hardware accumulate or that no actually even in the absence of anything wrong being with, with being the hard in the hardware you're going to have a fundamentally psychological reason for this yeah, and and in this case, psychological, not of the brain of the creature, of the somatic intelligence, right? It's a it's a, it's a it's a kind of existential boredom of the of the somatic in, intelligence, if you will, and and so that that led me to to some weird thoughts, and and I wonder what 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 you think about this. Um, if you could imagine uh, a sort of, uh, 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 and I don't know if we've already, I can't recall if we've already talked about this, but but a sort of. Um, uh, Judeo-Christian notion of heaven, right? You sort of show up, everything is great, and it's going to be great, you know, for an infinite amount of time. Now the question is, right? You, you know, you, could, you you've got a snake, you've got your pet dog, and 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 you. My, my intuition tells me the snake is going to be completely fine at at infinitum, maybe. The dog, probably, if the conditions are very good, every day is like every other day. I'm not sure if the dog's going to have any problems over, right? And so in this in this environment, we've done away with brain degeneration. We've done away with aging of the physical, the, you know, there's no physical aging. Now what happens to the human, right? I don't know. We can we could keep ourselves busy for the first 10,000 years, but what happens a billion years in? Is it? Do you think it's possible to stay sane for 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 pure for 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 extremely long periods of time with no organic damage, just by virtue of the of of the, I don't know some some sort of psychological need for further change? What, what do you think about that? Is that is that anything? Yeah, yeah, it's fascinating. Um, I personally think that you 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 couldn't um, and you wouldn't want to. Um, so from a purely mathematical perspective, what you're talking about is oscillator death. Um, so attaining your steady state, your goal, and staying there, this is exactly uh, equilibrium physics death. Um, and you become a closed system, and you lose that which is characteristic of biological self-organization. You could actually say um, any kind of interesting non-equilibrium uh, or out of equilibrium or far from equilibrium um, um, dynamics. So. To, to you know, to to stay in one place violates the kind of solenoidal dynamics or uh, red queen dynamics that is uh, definitional of life. Um, so I don't think you can uh, elude death. Death is just part of a life cycle. It's part of this solenoidal dynamics. It's part of this itinerant uh, attractor manifold. Uh, that defines the self-organization and open systems that we'll be talking about. Um, so I, I, I would actually contend that the, 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 all the snake and the dog and you and I would uh, would not survive terribly long, e even in heaven, in the same form. And if we did, 
we would technically be um we would no longer be sort of uh, uh well of course we wouldn't be living because uh, we would be dead but we certainly wouldn't have the dynamic itinerancy and the normal laws of physics would not apply nor would the way that certainly i understand self-organization as a constructive way of existing and living in you know in a world in a world to which you are open so as soon as you're open as a system you necess- and you have a steady state in other words you have characteristic states that define you as uh, you and me as me you necessarily have to have um these solenoidal dynamics um, which means that you you're attracting set is of the kind you have to keep moving, much like a shark or much like Red Queen dynamics. Clearly, because it's an attracting set, you will revisit characteristic states on the neighborhood um, periodically. And by you, I now mean that you know, it could be a species or have a life cycle, mm-hmm. or it could be um, you know, uh, the dendritic component of a cell. It could be a gamma oscillation, an electrochemical oscillation. But at every level, uh, you've always got to keep moving um, mm-hmm. simply because you've got this solenoidal aspect to um um non equilibria or dynamics um of open systems this is also uh, mathematically called um um detailed balance so if you have detailed balance you you you're dead um and that's the situation where you have this um equivalence between forward and time reversal dynamics so it doesn't matter whether you can go backwards or forwards in time that you look the same so that's being dead okay. and that's exactly um, not changing. So, you know, I think there's a mathematical reason why why one should not try and elude death. Death is just part of a natural cycle. Um, and, uh, you know, if you were able to um, immortalize one in the sense that you are no longer changing, I think that would be, um, from a mathematical uh, perspective, uh, a, a certain kind of death. Very interesting. So yeah, so so um, we we are uh, in in therapeutic terms. We're then uh, focusing our attention on uh, re- renewing. So 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 you okay? You it, clearly you cannot stay the same. The question is, what can you renew? To give a, a new a, a new sense of purpose to the to the somatic system, and that's that at yeah. this point is what we're what we're going to try for. Well, normally you and me uh, people, things like you and me, have children. So would you consider that to be a changing form of yourself? So earlier you said you cannot last forever in the same form, which implies that maybe you can in a changing form. Now, it's difficult for me to think of a snake or dog, and especially us, that stays the same. We're constantly changing even throughout this conversation. So is there a way, Carl, that we can live forever in a changing form in such a manner that you you do have a continuous self? Because you can change so much that you're no longer the same self a minute from now. Yeah, well, I, I was just thinking that, uh, or thinking about that, when Mike was talking about this sort of um, selfhood that um, makes sense of the deep past and, uh, uh, and the deep future. Um, you know, part of my self-modeling, and I identify as a human. Um, and of course, if I identify as a human, then my selfhood can actually tra- you know, be transgenerational. And on that view, at that particular scale, yes, you can live forever if your conspecifics uh, procreate in, in the right kind of way. So, from a, a purely sort of um, maths perspective, this is the the, the, the the cycle of reproduction, say for uh, sexual reproduction uh, 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 creatures, um, is just another expression of one of these solenoidal um, dynamics in open systems. Um, and you know, it's a particularly long one. Um, but it's a necessary feature of any um, any pullback attractor or a attracting manifold that, that defines um, you know the self information that we were talking about before. So into that self information is this a probability you're close to or on that manifold that contains these itinerant trajectories at every scale, and of course that also means that um, there's always a scale higher. So that you know there will be there will be cyclical motions of the heavenly bodies um, that are necessary to actually have a um, a yearly cycle of climate that are necessary to have a di- or a diurnal cycle of uh, day and night that have you know that contain my sleep wake cycle that contain right the way down to respiration right the way down to um, fast oscillations of you know of our 
uh, dendrite in the, our favorite cell in the hippocampus. All of these contextualize each other, but the one recurrent theme is this revisiting states that I was once in simply because if my attracting set or the set of states that characterize me or my niche or my niche's niche um, didn't, was not attracting, then I would just exponentially diverge and dissipate uh, because that would, that would not be self-organization. To stay informed in an ever-evolving landscape, I see The Economist as a wellspring of insightful analysis and in-depth reporting on the various topics we explore here and beyond. The Economist's commitment to rigorous journalism means you get a clear picture of the world's most significant developments, whether it's in scientific innovation or the shifting tectonic plates of global politics. The Economist provides comprehensive coverage that goes beyond the headlines. What sets The Economist apart is their ability to make complex issues accessible and engaging, much like we strive to do in this podcast. If you're passionate about expanding your knowledge and gaining a deeper understanding of the forces that shape our world, then I highly recommend subscribing to The Economist. Economist. It's an investment into intellectual growth, one that you won't regret. As a listener of Toe, you get a special 20% off discount. Now you can enjoy The Economist and all it has to offer for less. Head over to their website, www.economist.com slash Toe, T-O-E, to get started. Thanks for tuning in. And now back to our explorations of the mysteries of the universe.